This video is for art teachers who would like to teach their students about pinch pots. In kindergarten is how I would describe the age group that I'm going to be talking about in this video, but you could probably use it for any grade because the first time I taught clay, my students had never had any experience with clay, so the entire school did pinch pots. So you could use this video to teach if you'd like some modeling on how I teach it and how it has gone well. And it is from lots of trial and error and lots of things going wrong. So if you have a kiln, you can use this video. Um, I don't currently have a kiln, so I'm going to be talking about air dry clay. And in the video, I'm going to be using air dry clay. But all of the skills and techniques are how I would teach clay is as if I actually had a kiln. So I hope that that helps. But um, all the students get a piece of clay about the size of their fist and one box of clay, so 25 pound box of clay, equals about 48 um, spheres of clay about the size of students' fists. And if you are doing attachments with older students, they're, they're attaching things together, then they're gonna need an extra piece of clay for every four kids because my tables hold four students. So there's an extra piece of clay in the center of the table that they can pinch and pull off to make attachments onto their project, depending on what we are making. But in kindergarten land, we start with the pinch pot because everything builds on that skill. As art teachers, we're very lucky that we have the students every single year and that what we teach them in one grade carries through as a skill all the way up to grade five. And I also teach preschool. So I teach preschool to grade five so I can really see the growth of students and their personal expansion in the arts. So I cover the tables with a piece of paper and a water cup and some basic tools. Most of the time, the best tool is a toothpick, like a wooden toothpick works great. I just get them at the grocery store is perfect or Wherever you can find them, they're usually fairly inexpensive. And if you have time in your curriculum, in your program, for the first day, so if you did it as a day one, they just explored and touched the clay and played with the clay and get that out of the way. And then the second day that you see them when you're doing your little mini clay unit, the second day is when you actually have them build something. So that that way they've gotten out all that excitement and anxiousness and whatever they're feeling and they kind of just got to touch and play and experiment. because That's what kindergarten is all about is just experimentation, methods and materials and um, just figuring out how to be in school as a little person. So I'm going to go over how I taught the lesson from start to finish to you, the teacher. And in another video, I would have it for the students to watch if you would like your students to watch it that'd be a separate video labeled for the student this one's going to be labeled like for the teacher at the bottom so we can tell the difference between videos that are for teachers and videos that are for kids or students okay so i'm gonna flip this around okay so we have a piece of paper at work I have a piece of paper laminated or in a pinch, I've just used paper. And the biggest thing is being careful with the clay dust and leaving a note for your custodian staff or just like educating them if they don't know, because sometimes people just don't know that clay dust is hazardous for the nose, eyes. Um, it's not good for us. So just making sure that your, your classroom is vacuumed and then mopped and not swept and that the students don't clap their hands together and you can just talk to them about that it's not great for kids with asthma and that it can hurt our eyes and our nose and our lungs and bother us is just talking about that safety. If you have not used clay before at your school, um, you can send home a note about students removing jewelry and just taking care of themselves and being responsible for themselves and that they can bring a big t-shirt and have a short fingernails. Those are like things I, t I talk to parents about because some kids, if they get clay under their nails, that bothers them for the whole day. And with my older students, we draw out the project. We talk about and draw about the project two-dimensionally before we do it three-dimensionally. So 
that way when they come in, they can use their full 40 minutes just to create their project. So with kindergarten, we read a book on the Kindle app on the projector called Lumpy's Gift. Highly recommend Lumpy's Gift. And we watch a video about clay called How It's Made because you might need some time fillers. You might not need time fillers, but if you need some, Lumpy's Gift as a kickoff opening to the lesson and finishing with How It's Made. Um, about clay, you might not need the video, but you might like to have things in your back pocket. So paper, um, water with a little bit of clay in it to make some slip, and some tools. So we talk about the sphere. I draw this out just like I'm drawing for you now. And I write the word sphere. And then we say this word together, sphere. I have them listen and repeat, keeping them engaged and participating in the project. And we say 3D sphere, that it is a 3D, 3D sphere of clay. And you can write the word clay on here. And we talk about how we're going to transform the piece of clay in kindergarten into a pinch pot because there's only three ways to hand build. Pinch pots, slabs, and coils. So we're learning one of the building blocks of um, hand building with clay. And then I draw a little arrow. The older kids draw along with me, but kindergartners are just watching. And I tell them we're gonna make this look like a snowball. And we can't expect that all students have had exposure to snow. So you might need to show students a picture of a snowball and like packing the snow. Where we live in Massachusetts, New England, USA, we know about snow and how to pack snow and make a snowball. And that we're going to take this 3D sphere of clay and for a minute it's going to look like a jelly donut. And this will all make sense as to why we do it this way um, in a second. So most students know what a jelly donut looks like. So, and that the picture directions really help when you're wandering around the classroom. This is projected onto the board. Or if you draw it onto the whiteboard, if you don't have a projector or as handouts on the table. And I can make these handouts available on my teachers, pay teachers, um, under the same name, Art Teacher Maven. So we go from the 3D sphere of clay to a donut to we want to talk to them about the pinch pot. So I draw this all out for them. Or you might have talked about it a day before as like a prep day. So that when they walk in, they can just do the project, depending how many minutes you have for class. So we're going to talk to them about, and most kids know the story of the three little pigs, but we can't assume that they know or remember. So we can remind them that this is a little adobe. Adobe is a clay house. And that our two little thumbs are the two little pigs and they're going to stay inside the pinch pot and the fingers are going to be outside the pinch pot. We'll add an extra finger there. And that these fingers represent the eight big bad wolves. So I drew a little wolf for them. Like that. And that we're going to transform our piece of clay with these steps that the piece of clay is going to stay upside down and we're going to let gravity help the piece of clay form into the pinch pot and that when the pinch pot is done it will look like a it will look like a bird's nest and i project images of bird's nest because we can't assume that kids have seen bird's nests or half of a baseball so I project these images so they know what it looks like. Onto the board. So while you were setting up the clay, maybe the book Lumpy's Gift was um, playing on the whiteboard. I recorded it with my voice as a voiceover. And that was playing while I set up, put out water, put out the clay, whatever you need to do. 
And then I would go over these steps with them and then I would do it and then they would do it. So it's like four parts. And then if you have time, the video, how it's made. I've already pre-prepped the clay. It's in Ziploc bags with spritzes of water so that I can just pass it out very quickly. Classroom management and safety is like number one. If kids don't feel safe, they can't learn. So if you're like cutting clay and passing it out piece by piece, that's a lot of time for kids to have behaviors and things to go wrong and be in unsafe situations. So I recommend prepping your clay ahead of time just so that it's easier for you and will help you feel not stressed also. I have lots of videos about prepping clay on the channel as well. So here's a piece of clay and I rough cut it and put it in the bag just to save time and the kids are gonna form the snowball shape. So I, I show them this part of their hand and we say palm. We're gonna use our palm and we're going to, if, we, if you read Lumpy's Gift, it's a whack pack smack ow he says in the book and they like saying that with me you know we giggle we laugh that we are forming and shaping the clay and that we're using this cup shape part of our hand and then i'm turning you might have to exaggerate this the brain learns really well with your exaggeration so exaggerate that you are turning it because when i'm doing it really fast they might not notice and I'm using my dominant hand, my artist hand, the hand that holds the pencil, and that my helper hand is helping. And we have a sphere. We're going to use the water to smooth out the elephant skin. And if I just call those cracks, it's not as fun and not as memorable. So if you call it elephant skin, it's way more memorable. Or whatever you can think of that is cracked that would help your students remember. And I kept the clay in the air the whole time. And that's really helpful to keep the clay up. And we're gonna make the jelly donut. So I show them, there's the sphere. This is gonna be the jelly donut. So we're gonna press our thumb in and I'm gonna show them that it looks like a jelly donut. And that now we have our two pigs and we have our eight wolves. And the wolves are party crashers. They put holes in the walls. They eat all the best snacks. They jump on your bed with dirty shoes. They're not great party guests. So we don't want to let them in the clay house. The pigs are excellent party guests. They are safe and kind and responsible. And they get to go in the house. And the eight wolves have to stay outside the house in the yard. They can have a hot dog and a juice in the yard. The more you ham up the story, the more they remember. We're going to keep the pinch pot in the air the whole time when they put it down the minute it, they put it down they put their fingers in it's like a natural reflexes they get these t-rex hands and they just go in and they can't see what they're doing and they i'll show you what happens when they put their fingers in later so then the second little pig can fit in and the two little pigs are nice and safe in the house and the big bad wolves are outside the fingers you want to fuse them together as if they're glued together and it's like a duck's bill it's like pinching like this Pinching and turning. It's not like this because they'll end up with a hole in the bottom of their pinch pot. They're pinching and turning and we'll get that shape that will look like a bird's nest or half of a baseball. And when they get it to this stage, they're going to take water and they're going to smooth out all that elephant skin. They're going to buff it out. They can also use the back of a spoon to do this with their thumb on the spoon because that is an actual clay technique. And you're gonna see my bottom is rounded, so I'm gonna put it down for the first time and I'm gonna shape the bottom. And I'm just gonna check it. Now, if you are going to put this in the kiln, um, I would tell them that they can decorate the outs. You can leave it like this, this is great. If you would like to give them time to draw on their piece of pottery, you can show them that. They can draw designs with the toothpick, with the end of the Sharpie. They can make circles. But what if they don't like their design? That they can use some water and erase it, like so. If 
And if you're going to fire it in the kiln, you want to carve their initials into the bottom and their class code or somewhere. Sometimes it gets messed up when you put it down. So sometimes the safest place is the bottom. So you might ask them not to decorate inside so that you can easily find their name and their class code on here. Um, now I'll show you what happens when they put the clay piece down to build their pinch pot. Their automatic response is to put their fingers in here. So when we have it up in the air, like we just don't care. Keep it up to build the pinch pot. When they put it down, this is what they do. And they sort of get this wrenching motion happens and their pinch pot disappears. And then they no longer have a pinch pot. Now I do show them that I, you know, I do this, I make a mistake, I mess it up, and then, oh, no problem. We just start back over at the beginning. And no problem. The clay is very forgiving. And we can easily reuse the clay to start back over at the snowball, and they can follow these visual directions. They remember this is a snowball, and that's a donut. And these are the two, two little pigs and the eight wolves, and we end up with a pinch pot. So that while I'm wandering around the class, the kids who understand are going for it and the kids that need help are going to raise their hands. I'm going to do my best to help um, all the kids before the 40 minutes is up. If you're going to um, put this in the kiln, you're going to want to dry it for seven days until it feels like cool to your cheek when you hold it to your cheek. And then you're going to put it in your kiln at whatever temperature your clay has recommended. And I'll um, link the clay that I use in the description box below. And when it comes out of the kiln, you want students to dust it off. I give them a paintbrush and tell them they're archaeologists and that they're going to dust off their fossil. Just like real archaeologists do, you can show them a picture of archaeologists dusting pottery off. And you can paint it with watercolor paint is permanent. Or you can, um, if you have glaze, you can do a secondary um, firing depending on what the um, glaze temperature is and the temperature of your your clay but you want the walls thick like thick like um, a sharpie or a pencil and you can show them that if you're worried about them being too thick I just sometimes will pop a couple holes to make sure that there's no air bubbles and that the heat can escape and hopefully um, I've never had a pinch pot explode in a kiln when I did have a kiln so that is how I recommend teaching it. It's all about how you build it up and how excited you are to teach it. I have kids earn their clay day as like a special day for being safe, kind and responsible. Every class gets it. It's just a matter of when. And the classes that have good behavior earn it faster than the, kid, the classes that are maybe struggling. So, but everybody's going to get it no matter what. Um, I, I've never taken it away. I don't, I don't think that would be right. So that's just my recommendation. And I hope that helps you feel more comfortable and confident teaching um, clay. If you are using air dry clay and you want to send it home, I send it home in this state between two paper bowls. And I have a video about that. I will put it in the description box below. And I send it home in this state because if it falls, it's going to be okay. If it was um, dried, it would break if it fell. So it's more likely to make it all the way home in this state. And um, if something happens to it on the way home, it gets smushed. They can reform it and dry it all the way at home and it would look like this. So I hope that that is helpful to you and um, have a good day.